City Clerk, Sue Richards, to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you very much. The only item uh, on tonight's special meeting agenda is S6-1, resolution by Alderman Hanna and Alderman Gisha, authorizing the city of Sheboygan to enter into, into contract with Humana for medical benefit plan claims, administrative services, and stop loss insurance. President Hanna. Well, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, at this time, do I need to ask for a suspension of the rules? Yes. Okay, I'd like to make a motion. I'd make a motion to suspend the rules. Second. There's a motion and a second to suspend the rules under discussion. Uh, this is an issue that needs to uh, have suspension. It will require 12 votes. Does anybody have any objection? Otherwise, we'll not take the roll. Does anybody have any objection? There is no objection. All we need now is a motion to put the resolution upon its passage. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I would make a motion <clears throat> to put the resolution upon its passage with an amendment. Second. And motion and second. No. And my amendment is uh, after the line with option one of Humana's proposal, I'm sorry, uh, coverage with 125,000 specific deductible and with an aggregating specific of 75,000 per plan year. I think we need to add that language. Our attorney will place it in the right spot. Okay. Um, that was a motion. Is there a second to that amendment? Under discussion, the amendment only. Alderman Clay Unis. Thank you, Your Honor. Could I have it repeated? It was hard to understand over here. Certainly. Thank you. President Hannah, would you please repeat? It was even harder to read. Oh, good. <clears throat> With an aggregating specific of 70,000, 75,000 per plan year. And that would go, if I'm following it correctly, would go right after the 125,000 specific oh. per, covered person. per covered person. Yeah, it goes after per covered person. Then you go with with an aggregating specific of 75,000 per plan year. Thank you. Thank you. Any other discussion on the amendment only? Uh, there be a non. Please call the roll. Warren. Aye. Bulk. Aye. Gisha. Aye. Hannah. Aye. Heideman. Aye. Kittleson? Epstein. Clay Aye. Manny? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Ryan? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Verhasselt? Aye. And Wangaman? Epstein. 13 ayes and two abstentions. Motion carries. I'm sorry, 12 eyes and two abstentions. Motion carries. President Hannon, now I need a motion to put the resolution upon its passage as amended. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'd make a motion to put the resolution upon its passage as amended. Second. Motion and second. Under discussion. Alderman Rinfleisch. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, just for those that were involved with this, uh, if you could explain the differences between this year and the previous years, just so we know what we're looking at. I did not get this entire packet until this evening, so I have not had a full opportunity to go through. Uh, President Hanna? Sure. Right. Yep. Sorry. I got you on mic. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I'm thinking that the uh, stop loss is the same. All we're doing is changing from Prairie States as the TPA to Humana. And it's a, the same plan that you approved before. It was an oversight on our part not to be specific that it should have been Humana. Um, and this is just to clarify it and to make everybody in the legal department happy. Thank you, President Hanna. Is there any other discussion? There being none, please call the roll. Falk? Aye. Gisha? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Clayunis? Aye. Manny? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Rinfleisch, Ryan, Vanderweel, Verhasselt, and Wangaman. 13 eyes, two abstentions. Oh, Alderman Voren. I do that all the time. <laughs> Alderman Voren. Thank you. President It's not personal. I think it was 13 to 2 on the... It on was 13 to 2 on the other on one, the too. On the amendment also. Thank you. 13 to 2 vote. Motion carries. I need a motion to adjourn. Motion second to adjourn. Any discussion? 
All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Stand adjourned. Next meeting is at 7 o'clock, regular council meeting. Drivers face all kinds of distractions. Before your wireless phone becomes one of them, stop. Drive safely. Keep your phone in easy reach and dial sensibly. In bad weather or traffic, call later and use a hands-free device. Remember, with wireless, safety is your call. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to tonight's Common Council meeting. As usual, before we start the meeting, we ask our city clerk to read the quote for the week. Madam City Clerk. Thank you. You are capable of more than you know. Choose a goal that seems right for you and strive to be the best, however hard the path. Aim high, behave honorably. Prepare to be alone at times and to endure failure. Persist. The world needs all you can give. Thank you, Madam City Clerk. Call the 19th regular meeting of the Common Council to order. Please call the roll. Boren? Here. Bauk? Here. Gisha? Here. Hannah? Here. Heidemann? Here. Kittleson? Here. Kleinus? Here. Manny? Here. Meyer? Here. Montemayor? Here. Rinfleisch? Here. Ryan? Here. Smith? Here. Vanderweel? Here. Verhasselt? Here. And Wangeman? Here. 16 present. Quorum is present. I'd ask Alderman and Manny to lead us in the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Alderman Manny. Approval of the minutes, President Hanna. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'd move for the approval of the minutes. Second. Motion and second to approve minutes. Under discussion. There being none, all in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Minutes are approved. Mayor's appointments, Attorney McLean. Thank you, Your Honor. Hereby submit the following appointment for your consideration. Gene Kittleson to be considered for appointment to the Joint Municipal Court Court Advisory Committee to fill the unexpired term of Rich Gephardt, whose term expires 4-30-08, signed by the mayor. This appointment typically lies over. Does anybody wish to suspend rules? President Hanna. Mr. Mayor, I'd move to suspend the rules on this appointment. Second. Is there any objection to suspension of the rules? Alderman Milfeis. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, I had my... your button already on, by the way. <laughs> Did you? <laughs> <laughs> At least I'm consistent. Um, not necessarily having any opposition to um, Alderman Kittleson filling the position. Uh, I guess, though, does the advisory committee meet between now and uh, two weeks from now when the one would normally lie over? Or there, would there be some importance for us to have to come through right now? There are some issues that I would like to bring forth to the advisory, municipal court, joint municipal court advisory committee that uh, some members of the finance committee have expressed concern with, and I'd like to do that, and I'd like to have a full advisory committee present. Okay, that, and that, that would be before two idea. weeks from now, correct? Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. No objection then. President Hanna? I was just going to clarify that the finance department does have some issues, and we would appreciate that. Okay, thank you. Anything else on that? Yeah. Otherwise, uh, I need a motion to confirm the appointment. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I would make a motion, motion to confirm the appointment of older person Gene Kittleson to the Joint Municipal Court Advisory Committee. Second. Motion and second. Under discussion. <coughs> this is the position under discussion. The position that um, Mr. Richard Gibhart, who was finance director, uh, was not able to fulfill its role anymore because he retired. There being no more discussion, please call the roll. Gesha? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Clayunas? Aye. Manny? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Ryan? Aye. Smith? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Verhasselt? Aye. Wangeman? Aye. Boren? Aye. And Bauk? Aye. 
16 ayes. And yes, we want you to vote for yourself. <laughs> <laughs> Motion carries. Uh, Attorney McLean. Uh, hereby submit the following appointment for consideration. Susan Hart to be appointed as Director of Human Resources and Labor Relations, commencing January 22, 2008, expiring January 21, 2013, signed by the Mayor. This appointment will lie over, but there is some discussion that I'd like to, uh, to have. Uh, and there are some people that would like to speak. Uh, first person is uh, Chief Kirk. <coughs> Mike is on. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, Common Council. In case I get long winded, I brought some water. <laughs> Actually, um, in the past week or so, I've been asked uh, by several aldermen, some citizens, as to uh, my evaluation or as to my concerns or thoughts as to Susan Hart and the HR uh, director's interim position that she held. I told those persons what I honestly believed, and they said, Chief, would you be willing to say that to the Common Council? Well, certainly, absolutely, I will say. What I say to people when they ask me questions is what I honestly believe, and I will say that tonight. A person at work today said, Chief, you're being a pawn. You're being a pawn because someone wants you to get up there and say good things about someone, and that's not the case. The case here is we, the city, need to operate as a unit. We move forward as a unit. When someone asks me my opinion, I will speak honestly and say what I firmly believe. I wish to operate as a unit, and as a department head, I was not involved in the selection process. I'm not involved on the, inter team, the interview team. I have not coming up here today to lobby. This is not an endorsement. When someone asked me what I thought of how or, or how Susan Hart has operated as an interim HR director, I gave them, all of them, the same opinion, and it's an honest opinion. I cannot speak for other departments. I will not. I will only speak for the police department. Susan Hart has helped us in a number of different ways. Susan Hart, I believe, is an advocate for the non-rep group of employees. She has spoken out impressively at meetings that I have been at. She has fought some issues with vigor. And after many of these meetings, I walked away very impressed with the attitude she brought, the intelligence, and the effort of which she dealt with issues. Once again, I cannot speak as to the other candidates who are going for this position. I have not interviewed any candidates. I have not talked to any other candidates. I have not seen their credentials. All I'm saying is when someone asks me, Chief, would you address to the Common Council what you address to those, or at least one on the, the interview team, and to other aldermen, absolutely I will. As far as Susan Hart working as a unit, she has done and dealt with every issue I've posed to her. As to the advocate role, very impressive. Also, the efforts of job description revisions, she has dealt with those. She said she would, and she was done when they said they would be done. She has addressed them in a very well-organized manner. Lastly, I wish to say once again, this is not an endorsement. It's not me up here trying to lobby for someone. It is someone, and a number of you, asked me my opinion, and then I was asked, Chief, would you address the Common Council? I certainly will. We as a unit must be willing to sit and honestly voice our opinions. Once again, this is what I firmly believe. I've related this to some of you here tonight. I've related to some that are not present here tonight. This comes from my point of view of working with her, my experiences working with her, and I think the comments that I said of her tonight are well deserved. So, thank you very much. Thank you, Chief. <clears throat> Alderman Smith. Thank you, Your Honor. Can I a ask a question to the Chief? 
Chief, it's up to you if you want to answer any questions. Normally, we don't, we wouldn't do that. We'll, we'll allow this question and then we'll just move on. Thank you, Alderman Smith. Oh. Thank you, Your Honor. I would just like to ask the Chief if you have ever had to give an account publicly hiring for a similar position like this, if you've ever had to do this in public forum before. No. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Uh, the next person would like to speak is uh, um, Chairman of the um, Civil Service Commission, Mr. Lucio Fuentes. I do need a motion to open the floor. I'd make a motion. Second. Motion and second to open the floor. Any discussion? All in favor say it. Under discussion, Alderman Bauk. Thank you, Your Honor. I'm just curious about, I mean, we know it needs to lie over. Why are we doing this tonight instead of two weeks from now? It could be the, the discussion is permitted. Oh, okay. Thank you, Alderman Bauk. Uh, all in favor, open in the floor, say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Aye. One nay. Alderman Bauk. Uh, Mr. Fuentes, please. The mic is on. Good evening. Uh, Mayor Perez, uh, members of the council, guests. I'm here basically to explain to you the process of the Civil Service Commission, the responsibility and the task of that commission, <coughs> how it works. Obviously, I cannot talk to you about the closed session discussions that we have with the candidates, but the process, which is very important, and also tell you that the commissioners take this position, their responsibility very serious. I've been on the Civil Service Commission for 22 years. I was first appointed by Mayor Richard uh, Schneider, and then after his tenure, I served under Jim Schramm, under Civil Service Commission, and now we saw uh, Mayor Juan Perez. Have worked with four different HR persons uh, that have been hired by the city. Um, the, the commissioners are appointed by the uh, mayor and confirmed by the uh, council, as you all know. There are three responsibilities that we have uh, as the Civil Service Commission. One of them is to help with the selection and the process of selecting the department directors. The other one is dealing with grievances and appeals that might come up to the uh, HR office. And if the HR office and the union or the individual choose to go to the commission, we set up a hearing and listen to their grievances. We also assist the HR office uh, develop examination procedures for classified and unclassified positions within the city. We do not create positions. We do not eliminate positions. We also do not give raises or uh, demote anybody. The, um, the role of the commission is to provide an open and fair process for all applicants. And that's basically what we look at and that's basically what we do. When a position is advertised, the three commissioners look, mm, my mouth is real dry. I'm a little bit under the weather, <laughs> so <clears throat> bear with me. We review all the applications and the three commissioners rank them. And then after we rank them, we deliberate and by a consensus decide who we interview, how many, and, and who those individuals are. Via the interview process, we look at the education, we look at their experience, character, references, and the uh, HR office provides to us job descriptions and overall of the responsibilities of the individual that is going to be, or the position, and also uh, we prepare questions beforehand and we ask you know, questions of the applicants. The HR office is responsible to, to make the advertisement, uh, get the applications, make arrangements with the candidates, and set the meetings for us to interview these individuals. The three commissioners, myself, Marilyn Donahue, and Ronald Rainflesh, interview the individuals. And <clears throat> By a consensus, we decide what two or three persons we're going to be recommending to the mayor 
for selection. He has the right to also interview those individuals and have even assistance to do that if he wants to. If he finds that none of the candidates that we submitted um, he feels are a good match, then he lets us know and we start all over. Look at the applications that came in again and, and solicit more applications and go through the process again. Basically, once we submit the three candidates or two candidates to the mayor, that is the end of our job. And after that, the mayor decides uh, who he wants to appoint, who he feels is going to work well with him, who's going to be a match in, in this environment. So basically, that's, that's the process. Thank you. What's this? <clears throat> I lost my pen. <laughs> and then we have one more person that would like to address the council and then I'm going to explain a little bit after that a little bit of what uh, what's going on uh, Susan you are department head you can speak Thank you, Mr. Mayor and Common Council. I stand before you tonight to address my concerns about the appointment of a new Human Resources Director. I was appointed Interim HR Director on November 26, 2007. I have been in this position six weeks today. During this time, I did apply for the Permanent HR Director. I was pleased to have received an interview with the Civil Service Commission to be on the list referred to the mayor's office and to be interviewed by the mayor and his interview team, Chief Listusky, Paulette Enders, and Bill Bittner. I was also pleased when I learned that I was chosen as the final candidate and I am honored to have the appointment placed before you, the coming council. Unlike the three previous department heads you have confirmed in the past six months, the assessor, the DBW director, and the IT director, the appointment of the HR position has become ugly and personal. Several people have told me that they have heard from various older persons that unless I pull my application from, for, from consideration, that I will be drugged through the mud, that my life will become so uncomfortable that I won't be able to stand it. Alderman Hanna has been very outspoken in the community and with the media regarding his dislike of me. He has shared confidential personnel information he learned in closed session of the Civil Service Commission to another who shared it with another and so on. Yesterday he told two different friends of mine that I am incompetent and that I am responsible for losing the city money. He has contacted the Sheboygan Press with various concerns. For these reasons I would request that Alderman Hanna abstain from voting when the confirmation comes to a vote. I have always had immense respect for Alderman Hanna as a family man, both as a husband and as a father, a community member, and most recently as an alderman. As such, I was very surprised to learn about the behind-the-scenes efforts to tarnish my reputation and to negatively affect my employment with the city. Not only has this affected me personally, but has impacted my family and created a hostile work environment for the staff in the HR department. I am not political. I am an employee of the city. I report directly to Mayor Perez. He is my supervisor. I follow employee protocol and city policies and just like the rest of city employees, do what I am directed to do. So I am truly perplexed as to why some members of this council have decided to take it upon themselves to ensure that my loved ones and I are personally attacked. When and why did this become so petty, vindictive and mean-spirited? Why not just allow one's vote to speak for their opinion? It's my hope that the council will take appropriate measures to ensure that this will never again happen to a current or prospective employee of the city's. I am very honored to work for the city. Every day I get to work with the best of the best. Each department head and staff member brings a unique qualification to the city that works as a benefit to the whole. I enjoy my work, especially the HR work the mayor assigned to me the past year. I worked with the HR department regarding the early retirement program, the negotiations for the current three-year union contracts, and budgeting to avoid layoffs. 
but I have to admit that I'm especially pleased through the hard work of so many and under the leadership of Alderman Hanna. The city of, of Sheboygan has a new insurance program that will save the city of Sheboygan from dramatic cost spikes in future years. As the city's HR director, my primary goal would be to work with you as well as the mayor, department heads, and employees to have the best interests of our citizens first and foremost in our minds. Thank you. Thank you very much. Just wanted to add a little bit, uh, and Alderman Bauk, uh, if you are correct, this, this typically would lie over, and if that is a council's wishes, that's fine. I, I am okay with that. I will point out, point out that uh, Susan Hart has been, quite frankly, burning the candle at both ends. Uh, she's been doing two jobs. She's been doing the uh, mayoral assistant job. She's been doing the HR job. She got no additional money, unlike other people who were assigned interim on an interim basis got money. That's not that I'm making that an issue. I'm, I'm saying that to clarify. Susan Hart, as uh, has been uh, indicated, has been uh, a candidate. Uh, at some point, the uh, process came into question. Uh, it was decided, I decided to start the process over again and handed it over back to the Civil Service Commission. You heard tonight from the chairman how seriously they take their duties, how well they do their job, how long they've done it, and what they take into consideration. I made it very clear from the very beginning that although, although I preferred Susan, I would take anybody that they recommended and take a real serious hard look at them. And I did that. The additional safeguard that I put on there so that there's no uh, uh, perception that a job is being given to a person because they're friends or, or anything like that with anybody else. And this is a safeguard that I put in place because I wanted it to be a more objective process. And this has never been done by other mayors as far as I know. But what I did is I created an administrative interview team. And that is I picked three people to help me during the interview process. It's not just me. In the past, it was just the mayor. In the past, it could have been just one candidate referred. It could have been two. It could have been three. All of those scenarios have occurred in the past, and the appointments were made. In this particular case, Questions have arisen as to how the process occurred in my office. I can share with you in general what occurred. I cannot share specifics. And that is because personal issues are extremely sensitive and confidential. There's reasons for that. The law protects people and applicants. So the extra uh, precautionary step that I took uh, is not only did I have an administrative team of three people, qualified people, department heads, is I stayed out of the debate after we interviewed all three. I allowed those three people to debate it amongst themselves. And my instruction was, you give me a name that you think is the most qualified, and you're not going to disappoint me. Out of those three, I'll take what you give me. Now, I picked Bill Bittner because Bill Bittner has no allegiance or political alliances with anybody. He, he, he's not from town. He just came here. He just got hired. He's got no allegiance. He's extremely objective, professional. In the short time that he's worked here, I have, I have nothing but admirable admiration for him and respect. I picked Paulette Anders because Paulette is a true professional, very objective. She has her five-year contract already in her pocket. She has no pressures from me or the alderman or anybody like that. If you recall, she got that five-year contract not long ago. And then I picked Chief Lustusky, a man of high integrity and character and honor, conducts himself professionally at all times. Those are the three people that I picked, and those are the three people that on their own, in a separate room outside my office, sat down for 15, 20 minutes and decided who they thought would be the best candidate. Different things are weighed. I know there's been issues that other people look better or are more qualified on, on their resume and based on their applications. 
I know a lot of people in Sheboygan that if you would see their resumes, you wouldn't think much of them. Put them to work and you're going to be in awe. Anybody can look pretty on paper. But that's not the only thing I weigh. And I believe that's not the only thing other people weigh. We weigh everything we possibly can because when we make that choice, when we make that call, that's the one that's going to lead, help lead this city into the future. I understand the importance of the HR position. And by any means, am I, not, am I trying to minimize it? I understand the importance of the process. This is why we stepped back, take, took a look, another look at it, and ran it through again. I want to apologize to Susan Hart for what she is going through. If I could absorb that pain for you, I would do it tonight. I just can't. You have to seek your own strength with God on that one. This disappointment will move on, lying over. I ask that any member of the public or the media have any concerns, get the correct information. Because folks, anybody and everybody says anything they want. It doesn't make it true. They were saying that Bill Bulky was a member of my administrative team. No, it was Bill Pidner. It's not true. There's a lot of things out there that are not true. Please get the correct information, please. I ask for your support for Susan Hart's appointment. I ask you to look hard into your heart, your soul, and mind, and look at it objectively. You've heard what's happened. Take away all the personal. Take away all the, the political. Just look at the, look at the position and look at the person. Is that a right match? It is for me. It was for the three other people. Thank you very much. Public, for, public forum. Uh, Madam City Clerk. First on the list is Marge Sagali. I need your home address, please. 2732 B. Boy, North Savannah Circle. North Savannah? Savannah Circle. Excuse me, I'm not feeling well either. You have your mic just a little bit closer, then they'll be able to pick it up. Okay. Okay, and you will have five minutes. Thank you. Good evening and Happy New Year to everyone. I am here again to ask for your assistance in a matter that I discussed at my last appearance at Public Forum. And that was concerning committee of the whole meetings to hear from our department heads. In my last appearance, I asked the committee of the whole chair for her assistance in this matter when I should have asked the whole council for their opinion. And I do apologize for not doing so at this time. So I am now standing before all of you asking for you to please request such meetings so that the taxpayers of the city are able to hear from the department heads as to what is transpiring in their departments and for them to answer questions such as why would DPW remodel and do upgrades on offices and lodge rooms at the maintenance building when our snow plowers are breaking down that our gentlemen who drive them would love to see them remodeled or upgraded. Is the rumor, and I will put rumor in quotation marks, that $500,000 was not put into the police budget when it comes to the new police station for the dispatch center. Where are the monies and why wasn't it allocated? Or to have Judge Delahunt tell us how municipal court is doing. From the information I am hearing, the judge and her department are doing very well, better than what was anticipated when the former council voted for it. These are just a few matters that could be discussed at the committee of the whole meetings. Now in closing, I will end on what I feel is a sad commentary for the city. We all know that in today's world, people come and go in working environment, and the city employment is no different. But by doing some inquiring, I found out since 2005 to December 31st, 2007, the city has lost 433 years, and I repeat, 433 years of loyalty and service to this community, their expertise will be sadly missed. 
Rich Gebhardt, 26 years. Tom Holton, 19. Pete Fullerton, 16. Ed Sherrick, 8. Marie Ellis, 9. Marilyn Ohm, 10. Bob Weiss, 33 years. Mark Zier, 33 years. John Kettleson, 30 years. Mark Zittle, 30 years. Linda Roker, 25 years. Steve Sharp, 30 years. Mike Jervin, 33 years. Kevin Grunewald, 35 years. Dwayne Jordan, 30 years. Steve Lockwood, 29 years. Jeff Meeky, 10 years. And Margie Verholtz, who was manager of our IT department, who put in 27 years of her life, is now gone also as manager of the IT department. She so deserved to stay here because she was the backbone of this city. These are 18 employees I have found, and for those I have missed, I do apologize. Only maybe a handful of these employees were recognized for their service to the city. Listening to the mayor's comments at the December 19th council meeting, he stated when the older persons questioned Mr. Lee on his credentials that that they were setting a dangerous precedent, and yet you yourself, Mr. Mayor, with all due respect, have set your own dangerous precedent by picking and choosing who you felt should be honored for their loyalty and service to their city when all should have been honored. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Next on the list is Henry Capitillo. And I will need your home address, Mr. Capitolo. Yes, that's uh, 1619 North 38th Street, and that's in the town of Sheboygan. Okay, and you will have five minutes, sir. Okay. Uh, on a lighter note, I will not be speaking about the HR position. Thank you for the opportunity to come before the council to speak on two issues that I believe are critical to the stability of the community. I had the opportunity to meet with two council members to discuss the increase of drugs on the streets of Sheboygan and the destructive effect it is having on families, crime, and the future repercussions for this community. Some people have a perception that individuals that do drugs are individuals that are homeless, uneducated, unemployed, and the lower class of our society. That may have been true at one time, but that is not the situation at the present time. Individuals that are now having problems with drugs, drug use can be your neighbor's high school son or daughter, your brother or sister's college student, single or unwed mothers, individuals that may be your own co-workers and or your friend's wife or husband. Drug use is like a virus that can affect anyone in our community. What are some of the effects that drugs are having in our community? Increased crime because drug users need their crack cocaine, crystal meth, heroin, Vicodin, Oxycontin, methadone, pot, or other prescription drugs. And they do not, when they do not have the money to buy them, they will look to your car, home, or even you personally to get the money or property that they need to trade or sell for their drugs. Some individuals may even resort to prostitution or possibly selling drugs for the drug dealer. How many of you have read in the Sheboygan Press on more than one occasion that some individual was stopped by the police and the police found drugs and even a weapon in the vehicle? I have spoken to various Sheboygan police officers and they too acknowledge that patrol officers are making more drug arrests. The dis number two, the destructive nature that drugs have on families. Family members who are forced to choose between constantly intervening for their loved ones, stealing from other family members, bailing them out of jail, paying their debts, or just wash their hands of this troublesome situation. The ultimate sacrifice of the families is to bury their loved one, who because of drugs has killed their son, daughter, wife, or other family member. Other negative effects of the community. Due to increased home and business burglaries, auto break-ins, and damage to personal property incidents, individual property and homeowners and auto insurance premiums will increase. Individuals and business will lose more money because they will have to pay the insurance premium deductible every time they make a claim. 
Some homeowner or businessman may even lose their insurance coverage because too many claims are made. After my discussion with the two older persons, they felt that many of my concerns were best suited to be handled by the county or state government. On some issues, I would agree with them, but I believe that you as council members can play a major role in the controlling the increase of drug use. By council members becoming more aware of the police budget and staffing needs of the street crimes unit, drug unit, patrol officers, and other support staff. Some older persons may say, but we just added two, six, two new police, or six new police patrol officers. That brings the police department at 100% staffing. To those, I would say, absolutely not. Did you know that six patrol officers, one of the six patrol officers, one will be replace, replacing a school liaison officer, and that there will be three more patrol officers that will soon be retiring? And that the, another patrol officer has been promoted to a police detective, and that another patrol officer has left the department to go, to go work in another community. If my math is correct, we are now three patrol officers short, and in a very short time, we again will find ourselves short a total of six patrol officers. Remember the residents of this community have entrusted you with their safety of their loved ones and the community that they live in if a new paramedic from the Sheboygan Fire Department were not able to respond to the community, to the, community st the community would still have Orange Cross for assistance since they too provide this service. What happens if a police officer, police officers are so stretched out that they are unable to respond in time? On who will you fall back on to respond? I tell you no one because there is no other police force within the city of Sheboygan. If you, can, if you can take the time and make sure that we have enough paramedics and firemen, when you can, then you can take the time to make sure that there are enough adequate police officers on the street and that vacant positions within the patrol officers' ranks will be refilled with new patrol officers. It is your responsibility and duty to make sure that you are informed and vote to keep your police force adequately staffed for what they have to face within this community. Remember to ask questions. If you are not satisfied, Contact the police chief, Excuse the me, deputy chief. Would you like your additional minute? Yes. Thank you. Contact the police chief or the deputy chief or even shift commander to get their input on what is needed with, within the department. Please do not let funding decisions for the police department become political. Be informed and do not be afraid to be a person that asks critical questions. Sometimes you may find yourself on the opposite side of the funding decision for the police department. Just remember... Is saving money in the short term worth spending more money in the long haul? In closing, I would also like to thank the uh, Department of Public Works. Today there was flooding over on our street, on 9th Street and 10th Street. Uh, I contacted them, and they had individuals over there within 15 minutes, and I, I definitely want to thank them for responding. Thank you. And last will be Val Schultz. And Val, can you give me your home address, please? 1747 Greenfield Avenue, Sheboygan. Before I get into my comments, I would just like to say one thing. Uh, the mayor said that no other mayor had an interview committee for hiring department head. Mayor Schramm did have an interview committee. I was a part of that. So just wanted to clear that up. As far as my comments, I come to you this evening as a county board supervisor and a resident of this potentially great city of ours. I have two things I would like to comment on. One of them is the mayor and many of you ran for office on a platform espousing shared services. Shared services were going to solve budget, budget issues and promote cooperation between our units of government. Last year, under the county's leadership, numerous meetings of the Shared Services Committee were held. A facilitator was brought in, and each member of the committee listed issues they thought should be addressed. A total of 32 issues were identified. The top nine were compiled into an action list. The top three were, one, emergency dispatch, two, ambulance service, three, walk-in clinic or wellness program. This year, 2007, 2008, an alderman is chairman and county board supervisor, vice chairman. We have had one meeting 
called by the previous year's chairman to elect this chairman and vice chairman. To date, we have not had a second meeting. There has not been one word of communication from the mayor or this council as to what your goals or, or intentions are for shared services. The perception is that this administration and council has no desire for shared services or cooperation. Ambulance service was taken off the table. I don't know where you are at with emergency dispatch. I know you are talking and discussing a walk-in clinic or wellness program, but you have not seen a need to bring any of these issues to the Shared Services Committee. It appears you have nothing to discuss or have no desire to advance cooperation between our two units of government to encourage savings and an amicable relationship to improve efficiency and savings for our property taxpayers. The second thing I have is I commend you for delaying ambulance service to the town of Wilson, although I doubt the fire department has given up that goal. At your last common council meeting, the mayor, attempting to justify his reason for supporting ambulance service to the town of Wilson, said they are already benefiting from our parks, library, and other infrastructure, so why not provide them ambulance service? What he did not mention is that these people have to come into Sheboygan to, join, to enjoy these amenities and hopefully spend some money while here. We are not taking these amenities to the town of Wilson as we would be with the ambulance service. I agree wholeheartedly if we are going to provide ambulance service outside the current city limits, it should be through annexation. Speaking of annexation, instead of looking at generating huge, huge amounts of revenue from people unfortunate enough to need the service of an ambulance, why not be aggressive at expanding the tax base? One more concern with the unprecedented exodus of employees from City Hall in the past 12 months, both voluntary and involuntary, you have to be asking yourselves, what is wrong with this picture? Thank you. Thank you, Bill. That's it. Thank you very much. Uh, next item on the agenda is a consent ag uh, agenda, but we have uh, a request. Alderman Bourne, Vice President Bourne. Thank you, Your Honor. I would like to move forward uh, documents number 1914 and 1929, please. Uh, it, it's okay. We, we will do that. Let's take 1929 first. We will hold 1914 for that, and then there will be a... Uh, did you want to read the introduction, Your Honor? Yes, yes. Okay. 1929, by law and licensing, reporting that a quasi-judicial hearing was held to determine whether the alcohol beverage license number 1089 held by Dave's Who's In, Dave Rupinski agent, should be revoked and stating their recommendations based on the findings of fact. Vice President Bourne. Thank you, Your Honor. I move that the report of committee be accepted and adopted. There's a motion and a second to accept and adopt 1929. Is there a second? Second. Second. Under discussion. Is there any discussion? There being none, please call the roll. Warren? Aye. Bauk? Aye. Gisha? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Clionis? Aye. Manny? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Rinfleisch? Aye. Excuse me? Aye. Thank you. Ryan? Aye. Smith? Aye. Vanderweel? No. Verhasselt? Aye. And Wangaman? Aye. 15 ayes, 1 no. Motion carries. Uh, Vice President Bourne, I need a motion to file 1914 then. Uh, Your Honor, I, I move to... Uh, uh, I move that the report of officer be accepted and placed on file. Uh, document number 1914. 1914? Is there a second to that? Second. Motion and second. Under discussion. There being none, all in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Consent agenda. President Hanna. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I would <clears throat> move that all ROs be accepted and placed on file and all RCs be accepted and adopted. Second. Motion and second. Under discussion. There being none, please call the roll. Oh, excuse me. We've got uh, 1913. It says an RC by law and licensing. That should read public protection and safety. Yes. Please make that notation. Other than that, please call the roll. Bauk? Aye. Gisha? Aye. Hannah? 
Aye. Heidemann. Aye. Kittleson. Clayunas. Manny. Aye. Meyer. Aye. Montemayor. Aye. Rinfleisch. Aye. Ryan. Aye. Smith. Aye. Vanderweel. Aye. Verhasselt. Aye. Wangeman. Aye. And Boren. Aye. 16 ayes. Motion carries. 1915 through 1924 to be referred. Resolutions introduced three. Am I going too fast? No, no, no. I got 1925 by Alderman Boren, authorizing the city attorney to engage the services of special outside counsel for the council and, and law and licensing committee in the matter of the hearing on the issue of the suspension, revocation of license number 1089 and authorizing payment for said services. Vice President Boren. Thank you, Your Honor. I move that the resolution be put upon its passage. Motion and second, under discussion. We need to suspend. Oh, you need a motion to suspend? To suspend. Okay, we need a, a motion to suspend the rules. Second. Motion and second. Is there any objection? There being none, the original motion stands. Thank you. Any discussion on the motion to put the resolution upon its passage, 1925? There being none, please call the roll. Gisha? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Aye. Manny? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Rinfleisch, Ryan, Aye. Smith, Aye. Vanderweel, Aye. Verhasselt, Aye. Wangeman, Aye. Boren, Aye. and Bauk. 16 ayes. Motion carries. 1926 and 1927 lies over. Alderman Rinfleisch. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, just a question regarding 1927. Um, the second section from library fund vacation, no, sorry, the first section, Mead Library fund ESLS grant, the amount of $500 to adult videos. Can we clarify what adult videos <laughs> is? <laughs> we have. <laughs> it's not what you're thinking. Huh? <laughs> President Hanna, and then I can, I can touch up on that too? Yes, thank you. Thank you very much. I'll address the mayor on this issue. Uh, we also found that a curious title in the finance committee, but it is just, it's, it is for mature content. It's not inappropriate content. Right. Um, it's interesting that the library chooses to separate their video selection based on children's videos and the opposite being the adult videos. That's the way it goes. Not our choice. Of <laughs> Not our choice. <laughs> but that's what that is. Any other questions, Alderman Renfleisch? Thank you very much. Uh, 1928, to be referred. 1929 has been uh, acted on. 1930, by law and licensing, recommending denying beverage operators license number 7727 based on the applicant's ineligibility to hold a license. Vice President Boren. Thank you, Your Honor. I move that the report of the committee be uh, accepted and adopted. Second. Motion and second. Under discussion. Under discussion is uh, uh, Veronica Paneer here tonight. She's not here, Your Honor. Please proceed. Uh, Ms. Paneer uh, had a, uh, a, a criminal record that prohibited her from, uh, from us granting the license, so we voted unanimously not to grant. Thank you, Vice President Boren. Any further discussion on 1930? There being none, please call the roll. Hannah? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Clayunas? Aye. Manny? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Ryan? Aye. Smith? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Verhasselt? Aye. Wangeman? Aye. Boren, Bauk, and Gisha. Aye. 16 ayes. Motion carries. 1931 to be referred. Report of Committee 8, 1932 by Finance, recommending authorizing purchasing security camera systems for replacement at Sheridan and King, Sheridan and King Parks and passing the substitute resolution. President Hanna. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Do I need to suspend the rules on this one? Uh, yes. Okay. Oh, no, wait. Hold on. No. 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 no, okay. Then I, the first is to accept and adopt. Second. And then put the substitute resolution upon his passage. Second. Motion and second to uh, put 1932 upon his passage. Under discussion. Alderman Ryan. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, this was originally a, uh, a, a resolution that was put in by myself and uh, Alderman Heidemann, uh, authorizing camera systems for King Park and Sheridan Park, uh, which are both block grant eligible. And uh, consequently, in finance, they've dropped Sheridan Park off of the 
list because uh, there may not be enough block grant funds available. King Park remaining on it. Now, Alderman Heideman and I, our main purpose was to get that camera in Sheridan Park, which the neighborhood has been, uh, has been campaigning for for a long time. Uh, so both myself and Alderman Heideman are not supporting this resolution because it no longer has Sheridan Park on it. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Ryan. Alderman Vetterwill. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, Alderman Ryan kind of explained a little bit of what I was going to say, but I think King's, King Park is a good place for it because vandalism and, and the crime is higher there. Therefore, I'll support this, and I think we should look at other parks that have higher crime and higher vandalism to put these cameras there in the future. Thank you, Alderman Vanderbilt. Alderman Geisha. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, if perhaps uh, we could have, a, there was a lengthy explanation as to why King not shared it, and it was more of a, of a flow of cash situation. Perhaps uh, if the council agrees to have Paula Enders, who made that recommendation or that discussion in finance, explain. I can ask her to come up. Paula Thank Enders. You. Thank you, Paul Magisha. Thank you, Mayor and Common Council. And I also have a cold, so I apologize. Um, the way that it was explained is currently we have two projects underway. One is Kiwanis and the other is King. Um, Kiwanis has been bid and it was slightly over budget. Um, we're using black grant funds for that project along with some park funds. Um, in order to make up that difference, but it's primarily black rent funds. The other project that we have also underway with black rent funds is King. So what we're going to do is that one hasn't been bid. We're working on selecting an architect for that, and we're going to add the cameras to that overall bid. Um, this February, uh, we've already sent out applications for the, to the not-for-profits to submit um, their funding for black grant and allocations. Also as a part of that, we work on neighborhood improvements, um, public facilities, administration, housing rehab, and we set aside those dollars. And that's all that the committee directed was to take those cameras and to put it through that process. Um, so that, that'll start in February. Um, it's usually completed by early spring. It gets submitted to HUD as part of our action plan. And then we know um, either late summer or early fall, whether or not that funding will come through. So it, it hasn't been forgotten. I think finance actually somewhat put it on hold, and we're going to put it through that process. Thank you, Paulette. Hold on. You may have a question there. Um, Alderman Smith. Thank you, Your Honor. My question to Paulette is, so basically are you saying that the block grant money is used to supplement some of the costs for refurbishing the parks, but it wasn't necessarily based on crime as Alderperson Vanderweel has suggested? Um, if I can, as we went, as this, I guess as the Common Council was going through this process in public protection and safety and public works, um, on, the, on the black grant side, I've always said it's an eligible activity. It's whether or not the Common Council and the appropriate committees feel that it was an appropriate park to put that camera. At one time, we thought there may have been you know, old black rent monies that we could have used for Sheridan, uh, but we used up all those monies when we rehabbed Sheridan and 13th Street. So I did check with finance, and finance had said you know, we, had, we had expended those funds. We would need to look at the new funds that are coming in, and that's why we're going to get it into this new round and this new application. Oh, thank you. Alderman Member Hassel. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, Paula, could you just clarify, at Kiwanis Park, we're planning on putting in a new clubhouse, I believe, or would, would it be referred to it as a new facility there? Just rehabilitating it. It's in historic structure, and so I think there's going to be some new restrooms, and they're going to do some work to help preserve that building. And approximately how much money will we be spending over there? I think it's, it's 200000 in black grant, and then it's some additional city funding of, I want to say, around twenty, but that's an estimate. In the camera at Sheridan Park, I was involved in some of the earlier discussions. Are we talking somewhere between $2,500 and $5,000? What I was, I did speak to Russ Schreiner, and what he thought was for a park, we could cover a park with a camera, which is not a security camera. It's a camera that will monitor activity in the park. And if somebody has, you know, catches something, sees that something happened, what the police department will do is they'll go back and they'll take a look. 
and then see if they can determine who committed that crime. So there, it's not going to be 24-7 monitoring. It'll be a filming of the activity in the park for about 5,000. 24-7 filming of the activity, right? Okay. I guess I wouldn't support it either, seeing that Sheridan Park was removed. Everybody knows of my ties and uh, connection with Sheridan Park and history. Um, knowing that the money is being spent at Kiwanis Park for curb and gutter and refurbishing of a nice facility, versus in lieu of $3,500 or $4,000 for a camera, I wouldn't support this vacuum as well. Thank you. Okay. All right. Thank you. Hold on, Paulette. All in many. Thank you. Uh, Bottom line in this, I believe I'm correct in assuming that we can assume if we pass this document, there's a camera in King Park with the intention, in all probability, of a camera being placed in another park next year or cameras being placed next year in another park. So we're in a process, and once we start, we've committed ourselves so those other cameras will be forthcoming. As long as those parks are eligible, and what they have to be is they have to be in neighborhoods that are low to moderate income. King was identified as one, Sheridan, um, Workers Water Street is another park, so there's particular parks. So Black Grant can't necessarily cover all the costs of cameras, but they can target certain neighborhoods. But at least then we're also including Sheridan Park in this process that we're yes. already considering. Thank you. Hold on for that. Alderman Smith? Just a statement. Thank you, Your Honor. No questions for your oh, point. Okay. Thank you, Paulette. Um, I understand that for future purposes that we could also be looking at cameras for other parks. But it would, I would do a disservice if I didn't point out the fact that this whole thing was spirited by the people who lived in the direct area of Sheridan Park. That's why we are even talking about this concept. I understand um, you know, doing all this refurbishing and that it can um, support having a camera there. But I think that's, we need to be fair to the citizens who brought this forth and just to earmark something for that area so I too won't be supporting it. And hopefully in the future we do get cameras at Sheridan Park. Thank you. Thank okay. you. Okay. Please call the roll. Um, we have a little bit of a problem. We can't pass this resolution because neither one of the aldermen are willing to sign it. Is that, so, a, pub is that a public works? No, this is Alderman Heideman and Ryan because they originally brought in the document with both parks on. And the substitute eliminating Sheridan, they are not willing to sign the document. So you either have to have someone else author it because they're not willing to sign it. So we don't have anyone signing the document. Something has to happen tonight before somebody else authors it. Well. What did you decide, Steve, earlier? Somebody else could author. Clean? Well, I, I think you've got a, a, a document in front of you, a substitute that's really not sponsored by anyone. Uh, their names are typed there, but nobody signed the substitute. So uh, I guess my suggestion is to lay it over uh, so that you've got a, a clean document at the next meeting, and hopefully by that time you'll also have the re referral back from the Public Works Committee as to their recommendation, because it was referred to two committees. You've got one committee's recommendation. Uh, it's obviously there's issues. Uh, maybe a good idea to have a clean document. Uh, who's ever going to sponsor the document needs to sign it uh, for it to be acted upon. Alderman Gisha. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, I would hate to see the folks in King Park not get a camera just because there's not a camera for both Sheridan and King Park. I know in the Finance Committee discussion, it was, uh, uh, it was clear we would like to expand cameras, at least from a, that discussion on that committee, um, to Sheridan. It's just that in King, it was part of a, of a, pro, of a, of a um, expenditure that already took place and those monies available. In the case of Sheridan, it just has to be pulled out and you heard Paulette explain that, and I don't think, um, and they can speak certainly for themselves, Alderperson Heideman and Ryan, I'm sure it's not their intention to say, well, if Sheridan doesn't get it, King's not going to get it either. And, and, I, and I just don't want people to get that assumption because I know that isn't what they had thought, and maybe they can speak to that. Alderman Vanderbilt, you're next. Thank you, Your Honor. If uh, Public Works still has a document <coughs> regarding this, this process, wouldn't it make sense to send this to Public Works, then they can author it and send their recommendations to us. Just a thought. I'm not sure where Public Works is on that. Okay. Okay. Alderman Ryan. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. Uh, to answer 
Alderman Vanderweel's question. This is uh, actually document uh, was put on hold at Public Works uh, pending the uh, availability of block grant funds um, that that uh, we could also include Sheridan Park with it. So we put the whole document on hold in Public Works. We weren't aware that finance was going to drop Sheridan Park off of it. Uh, my intention is, is not to uh, kibosh a camera system for King Park. My intention is to get a camera in Sheridan Park because the, the neighborhood of Sheridan Park are the people that spearheaded the entire camera issue and they've been beating their head against a wall for about the last two years on it. So I, I fully uh, would hope that we uh, maybe just put this entire document on hold and that we can do both King and Sheridan Park at the same time when the monies become available within a matter of months. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Wright. I don't want to, if you put it on hold, you still have the same document. It's still not being, uh, the two aldermen still do not. Huh? I would make a motion to file the document. I'm back with a claim. There's a, and there's a motion to file. Is there a second to that? Second. Motion and second to file a document under discussion. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank you, President Hanna. Uh, ordinances introduced 933 to 935. 1933, 1935 lies over. 1936 through 1937 to be referred. Matters laid over, 11, 1827. Resolution number 1790708 by Alderman Hanna, Bourne, Clayunas, and Gisha, authorizing a transfer of appropriations in the 2007 budget, establishing revenue and appropriations for training aids received from the state of Wisconsin for police department and for seminar funds and a scholarship received for police training. President Hanna. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I would move that the resolution be put upon its passage. Second. Motion and second. Under discussion. There is none. Please call the roll. Heidemann? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Clionis? Aye. Manny? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Ryan? Aye. Smith? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Verhasselt? Aye. Wangaman? Aye. Boren? Aye. Bauk? Aye. Gisha? Aye. Excuse me, and Hannah? Aye. 16 ayes. Motion carries. 1839. General Ordinance Number 740708 by Alderman Montemayor, Verhassel, Heidemann, Gisha, and Meyer, amending the code so as to change the table of organization of the police department. Uh, in parentheses, changing job code of captain of police, shift supervisor. Alderman Montemayor. Thank you, Your Honor. I move that the general ordinance be put upon its passage. Second. Motion and second. Under discussion. There being none, please call the roll. Kittleson. Clionis, Manny, Aye. Meyer, Aye. Montemayor, Rinfleisch, Ryan, Aye. Smith, Aye. Vanderweel, Aye. Verhasselt, Aye. Wangaman, Aye. Boren, Bauk, Gisha, Aye. Hannah, Aye. and Heidemann. Aye. 16 ayes. Motion carries. 1840, General Ordinance Number 750708 by Alderman Boren, Wagaman, Clionis, Manny, and Rinfleisch, creating Article 9 of Chapter 110 of the Municipal Code. And repealing the, and recreating Section 10.2 of the code so as to regulate sidewalk cafes in the city of Sheboygan. Vice President Bourne. Thank you, Your Honor. I move that the ordinance be put upon its passage. Second. Motion and second under discussion. Under discussion, uh, Your Honor, uh, there's one thing that one minor change that we have to make on the second sheet uh, under item number six. Proof, is a proof of insurance as required pursuant to 110-503. Uh, that should be C rather than E, if you could make that correction. You want to go through an amendment for that? Or just, yeah. yeah. Okay, I need a motion to amend it. Uh, motion, mo motion, to, motion to amend. Second. Motion to amend, that's C to something. Uh, e, e to C. E to C. Motion to amend. And a second. Under discussion. There being none, all in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. I need a motion to pass it uh, as amended. Uh, need a motion to pass the ordinance uh, as amended? Yes. You got it. Thank you. Under discussion. Uh, under, under discussion, uh, Your Honor, I would like to thank 
the people who served on the sub subcommittee. Uh, Alderman uh, Bill Wangeman was the uh, chair of the sub subcommittee. Uh, Alderman Corey Balk served on the committee. Uh, Alderman uh, Alderperson Jean Clayunis, who I understood did an outstanding job taking minutes. Uh, Dennis Radke was a business owner member. Uh, he owns, owns the Urbane and Doug Pelner, who owns Chocolate Fantasies. Uh, the non-voting members were Deputy City Attorney Charles Adams, uh, Lieutenant David Sheffhauser from the Police Department, and Steve Sokolowski from the Planning Department. So I would like to thank all of those individuals. Uh, Alderman Wangaman held three meetings, and I believe we came up with the, with the new ordinance. I believe we came up with a product that the business owners can live with, the neighbors, and also the various uh, city departments who have an interest. Thank you, Vice President Boren. Alderman Bout. Thank you, Your Honor. I'd like to thank uh, Chairman Boren for convening the special subcommittee to help us ad address that issue. Um, and I'd just like to point out the fact that from the original document, uh, there will no longer be a need for barriers for these uh, external cafes, these sidewalk cafes. Uh, no dedicated server, no early closing time, no food service requirement, and it acknowledges the American with Disabilities Act five-foot rule. Uh, and so we came up with a great document, as the chairman said. And uh, so I think it's great for business, and it's the right thing to do for, for visitors to our city. I would just like to say that to those applying for this in 2008, uh, the subcommittee and the committee talked very seriously about the fact that we will, we will give, uh, we're looking for good neighbors. We're looking for these proprietors to be good neighbors. And so we will give, uh, I suspect we'll give the police department uh, what they need when it comes to support, when it comes to people who aren't being good neighbors. So thank you again, Chairman Bourne. And I would agree that it is a good product. Uh, you did a good job, Alderman Logman, because I had no phone calls and no emails. So that is always a very good indicator. So good job. Uh, we have next Alderman Verhassel. Thank you, Your Honor. <clears throat> Excuse me. I'm, you know, I'm concerned about the effect, I guess, on business owners because this is just a, a thin layer of red tape that we're adding to the system. So I guess I'd ask Alderman Bourne if he could just share a little bit of the business owner feedback and also what the initial objectives were when we started down this road, I guess. Vice President Bourne. Thank you for that question, Alderman Verhassel. Uh, the, first, the first draft of the, uh, of the ordinance was uh, kind of drafted over a Madison ordinance. And uh, there were some in the community, including some of the business owners, that felt it was a little too cumbersome. And that's why uh, I wanted to have the subcommittee. I guess I could defer to also, also to Alderman Wangeman if he would want to make any comments. Uh, that's okay. all I have. There's uh, Alderman Wangeman. Would you like to please do, sir? You're on. Uh, thank you, uh, Chairman Bourne. Uh, Mr. Mayor, when we sat down with this, the business owners were concerned about overregulation. Uh, it was drawn, as Alderman Bourne said, um, based on the city of Madison. But when you look at the clientele in the city of Madison, you're looking at an entirely different group than would patronize uh, cafes here. Uh, we were concerned, of course, in the uh, offering an amount of control so the police department had things to work with. Uh, but there are many other ordinances in place. For instance, if you do have an unruly group out there, we don't have to have a special ordinance for that. We've already got disorderly conduct ordinances and things. We didn't want to pile ordinances on top of ordinances. And realizing that these cafes are not going to be patronized by 500 college students, we said, well, we're probably looking at a little bit different thing here. So what we did was we, uh, with the help of the uh, business partners that we had during the committee, we, we took a look at what they felt would be best for their businesses, and yet the police department was still giving us input as to what they thought would be best for them. And I think we've come out with a workable thing. Now, we've also promised everyone that we're going to keep a very, very close eye on this. And if in the future we do have a uh, problem with uh, whatever, uh, boundary lines or whatever, we may just have to go back and redo this ordinance and we're more than willing to do that and the police department has said that they will, under uh, all occasions, advise the committee, uh, law and licensing committee, that is, of any problems they have out there uh, with sidewalk cafes and uh, so we, hopefully it'll uh, work out well for us. Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. Next we have President Hanna. Well, thank you, Mayor Perez. You know, this began what could have been a contentious issue, and this committee did a marvelous job. Like you, Mayor Perez, I've received nothing but 
positive comments about how this was handled. We took something that could have been a burden on the businesses and you turned it into a winning situation. So my compliments to the committee. Thank you, President Hanna. We have two more, Alderman and Alderman Vanderweel, you're next. Thank you, Your Honor. I'm going to probably repeat what has <laughs> kind of been said, but this is a, a great example of working with the businesses. And it was mentioned that it's kind of a thin layer of red tape, but it's much better than the blanket of red tape that we were looking at in the beginning. And I'm very happy with the results that we have here today. Thank you. Alderman Bauck. And thank you, Your Honor. Just to, to address uh, the Alderman from the 3rd District's question to make him feel better, um, even better, um, this will replace. They will no longer have to apply for uh, the encroachment that they applied for last year. This, allow, this is the same encroachment, only it's permitted under a sidewalk cafe. So as far as bureaucratic, the bureaucracy, it's the same bureaucracy they had before, but it's legally defined in a way that supports the city and supports the police department in a better way. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you. Alderman Polk. And we have one more. Alderman Wagaman. Just, just one more note. I wanted to Thank Mr. Adams, I don't, he was here, I guess he probably left now, but uh, he did give us a lot of good advice and I'm sure his office spent a lot of extra hours working on this, so uh, I, I really do appreciate uh, him being there. And uh, there was one meeting where he wasn't there and we felt like a ship without a rudder, let me tell you, so. <laughs> but he was, a, he was a good man to have at our elbow. Thank you, Alderman Wagaman. Okay, we have uh, 1840. Mood, put, it, put it upon its passage. Please call the roll. Clayunas? Aye. Manny? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Ryan? Aye. Smith? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Verhasselt? Aye. Wangaman? Aye. Boren? Aye. Bauk? Aye. Yesha? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. And Kittleson? Aye. 16 ayes. Motion carries. Are the matters authorized by law? Attorney McLean. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, 1938 is an RO by the city clerk submitting various license applications for the period ending June 30, 2008 and June 30, 2009. And that uh, will go to law and licensing? Yeah. And 1939 is communication from Larry Samet, board member of the Sheboygan Boxing Club, requesting that the city donate 400 chairs to the Sheboygan Boxing Club to be used at USA Boxing sanctioned events and for use at the club itself. And that will go to finance, and I'd also like for it to go to public works because public works is in charge of the armory and the chairs. That's it? That's it. Thank you very much. Uh, I need a motion to adjourn. So moved, second. Motion, second, adjourn. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Stand adjourned.